What is up, YouTube fam? We are here. We've got the bib. We're rocking it out. We're on the practice screen. At day one, round one. And this is the story of catting for someone at the World Championships. Before we dive in, we got to ask, how you doing today, Sullivan? You having a good one? So catch me if I fall. guys in behind the scenes showing what is it like what does it look like to caddy for someone much less sort of have this sort of behind the scenes look at a pro tour event much less a major so we are here they are on the practice green warming up there is a practice area at new london uh, this is traditionally there's a driving range where they can get loose through use their arms and stuff but Lots of folks are gonna use the nets that are set up, but you can just hear putts rattling on and off because folks are trying to get that stroke dialed so they get confident before heading out there. So this is day one, uh, Pool A, Sullivan Sully uh, Tipton is playing at New London and we'll play Ivy Hill tomorrow. So excited to see, we got the 12.45 tee time and we're gonna keep our fingers crossed. This is the earliest we tee off for the rest of the week. So show you guys some highlights of the round before we dive in. All right, wrap up for day one. First off, what a great day at Worlds. It is, it's really fun seeing sort of the behind the scenes and a course that I know I personally uh, struggle with so much in New London, seeing the pros get out there and just shred it. I saw it in practice rounds. I knew it was gonna be a thing, but they just make it look so easy how they are able to tear these courses apart and really dive in and capitalize on what they're trying to do. Um, Sully, fantastic forehand. Truly, I would say easy top 10 forehand on tour. Very, very debatable. And honestly, I don't think it's that hard of a debate. Top five forehand on tour. Dude throws a 500 foot forehand like it's nothing. Like several times today, throwing forehands on shots that were like, I have literally no idea how it's getting that far. Um, pushing OB lines that we didn't even think were possible. Uh, I would say New London is not a forehand friendly course and so they tried to prove me wrong multiple times a day. Um, the joke we had going into this experience was that there were times where uh, I'm not throwing incredible shots at New London, but I've thrown a lot of bad shots at New London, so I know where not to be. And Sully did a fantastic job. Uh, I would say there was one moment where he was on the fairway of hole six, you know, taking a double bogey on the hole um, because he had played it well up to that point. And he was like, it's just a soft zone turnover here uh, into the green. And I think I failed as a caddy in the, the carrying the OB part uh, to the island of green of the green on six is always farther than people give me credit for, myself included. Um, and so I should have said something about it. I didn't, but it opened up a nice positive relationship of like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to say something in the future. And obviously he can process this and deal with it however he wants. It's a really fun experience, uh, coming through, like, because I know Sully and I, I don't know if it's like he value, I, don't, I would not say he values my, I don't know. I don't say I don't know. Uh, and so, um, but it's just fun to be able to like banter back and forth. I think this is. This shows me the potential of future caddyship and like what can come of things. We have a great card tomorrow. We are on third card. Uh, so we're Isaac and AB shot so hot today. And so they are five strokes ahead of Sully. He shot a six under round, a lot of ground to make up, but there's four rounds left. So um, we'll see how that goes, but it's going to be interesting because the card in front of us is Paul, Ricky and Gannon. So that gallery is going to be massive. Get you guys some video, hopefully, of that tee off. And then uh, the card behind us has Simon on it. And the card after that is the feature card or the lead card um, with AB and Isaac crushing it. So we might, we got Chris Dickerson on the card. It's going to be really fun to watch him. Uh, but uh, hoping Sully keeps pushing, keeps doing his thing. Should be a good day. So we'll update you in the morning before we head to the course. All right, everybody. What's up? Good morning. We are here. It is day two of Worlds. We're going to stop by the shop and do foundation uh, where they've been doing a daily drop of a bunch of discs. So excited to meet some people at the store, meet some Patreon members, some Birdie fan and Heiser 
club members. Um, but should be a really fun card today. I'm I'm kind of excited about the potential of like big crowds. Excited to see Ivy. I haven't had a chance to walk Ivy. I've seen the videos of it, but haven't had a chance. So gonna be interesting uh, seeing sort of what we can do while we're out there. Um, and hopefully so has got a great game plan. And uh, yeah, we'll jump into the experience. <laughs> Down. All right, everybody. Here we are, end of day two. Uh, just hopped out of the shower and ready to hit the bed. It's been an exciting day. It's been fun getting to meet so many of you throughout the the week so far. And it's crazy to think that it's only Thursday and you guys are already coming out in droves. Um, loving seeing the support. Today was a tough day out on the course. Uh, I think Sully described it as this is going to be the round full of what could have been. Started off really hot. I mean, he was shooting up the leaderboard for the front half. And the back nine, uh, just too many OB strokes, I think is really the best way we can describe it. Um, had a really unfortunate OB on 12, on 13. Um, just hung it a little too wide for that tee shot in bounds. Uh, and so, yeah, just just a tough look. So gave up four strokes to the OB alone. Um, Sully's playing some fantastic golf. We're T19, I think, heading into tomorrow. Have a really fun card uh, in Jake Wolf, which is fun because um, we love Jake on this channel. Uh, we have uh, James Proctor and then Lowry Lettinen, who is also was on our card day one. So should be a really good time. I think it's important if you ever end up caddying for an event and you don't know your player and you don't feel like, hey, I can I can like pass advice along. The play most of the players, if you end up on a card with a, a bigger name or something like that, they're there to work. Like imagine someone coming to your work day uh, and just pestering you with questions or something like that. And I think that some people just feel like because they have the caddy badge, they have a little more immediate access to pros. So you want to you want to create some space, keep some space, uh, keep it professional as best you can. Uh, like we had Chris on our card today, um, and Chris was there. He means business. He's a major winner. Uh, he's trying to hunt down a world title. If you have the wrong expectations, you can walk in being like, "Oh, we're going to hang out with Chris for two hours, like three, eight, four hours. That's going to be amazing." And it still was great, and Chris joked and had some good times and stuff, but you never want to be the one, like, overpressing that. Like, you as the caddy are there as an extension of your player, and so um, if Sully was engaging in conversation, and then it went on long enough where I saw an opportunity, then sure, you jump into the conversation, you'd be a part of it. You don't have to ignore the other people on the card. They're there for their work day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are, day three of Worlds, driving in. Uh, we're on the uh, road. What's up? What's up? Uh, we are on the long journey to hole one uh, because if you are not a player, then they have their own parking. And so spectators, we walk this long journey, caddies as well, vendors, all of that. The village is, if you know hole five, there is a huge field up to the right. Most people know hole five for the retention pond, but on the other side of the pond is the uh, the fly mart, the player smart, whatever you want to call it. So we are welcome from there. Got a fun car here today. We've got two super strong forehands and Sully and Jake Wolf. So excited. I've never met Jake in person, but this will be a fun experience. But like we talked about in yesterday's part of it, they're here to work today. So let's see if we can get work done. I'm most curious about is that Sully has been fighting a blood blister on his middle finger of his right hand for over a month now. And so he's had to tape quite often. 
Well, round one, he didn't tape and blood blisters started showing up near the end. So he was taped for all of Ivy yesterday. So we'll see, he might be taped again today and we'll see how much distance that loses him. I know he said he lost about 50 feet normally. Hopefully we're gonna see some great shots. So let's bring you into the round, game on. Here we are. And that's why you T1. Leave it. So, you know, like an hour until we part T's off. And the people are gathering. The game is alive. Let's go, party people. Yeah, he's feeling it. He's feeling it. Come on. Yeah. Next, from Indian Springs, Alabama, Sullivan Tipton. Yes, sir. Absolutely insane round yesterday. Our man got out there early start, got a birdie on hole one, biggest crown that we played in front of so far, even with the excitement of third card. Uh, on day two, the crowds were not necessarily following, but huge crowds. The weekend showed up and people started turning out, which was phenomenal. So, um, birdie and then tough, unfortunate shots uh, on hole two. So, we took a bogey, birdie, 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 bogey on hole six because we had a roll away that was just an absolute bummer. Followed up with a birdie on seven, a birdie on eight, and then nine. Ran the birdie putt, rolled away to 35 feet, nails the comebacker first part of the round it was electric everybody so Sully playing out of his mind staying in the zone Sullivan is a player that doesn't like to know where he's at he doesn't want to know what the score is so my job as the caddy is to come in and sort of say like hey we're doing good keep pushing or like hey it's not worth the risk let's stay where we're at things like that kind of the vibe they were going back and forth we go into hole 16 he had thrown some phenomenal shots throughout the round turns over the forehand a little bit gets a bad kick left he is struggling with where he's at, uh, doesn't really have anything, tries to make a forehand zone work. It gets kicked to about 75 feet, and he's like, ah, it's okay, you know, it happens. And I was like, dude, truly, what if we just, you know, make this putt and then, you know, go ahead and birdie 17 and call it a day? Because at that point, he was eight under, and hottest round, Ezra Robinson was in the house at eight. Um, and so he steps up and makes this putt. Y'all, yeah. it was so incredible. <sighs> crazy y'all so so cool um and so that ends up keeping him on the chase card coming out of the day because some people were still out on the course uh and chase card today an absolute electric time we are having calvin heinberg simon lazat eagle mcmahon on the card y'all weekend it's saturday out here there is a huge crowd of people out here i would anticipate that we're going to have close to a thousand people following the card um so our guys are going to get out there Keep it chill, keep it collected. He knows he can ball, he knows he, can, he, knows he can hang. Um, the star power is gonna be high, and Sully is the rising star that hopefully is gonna shoot past all these guys. So I'm bringing some updates throughout the round. I'm gonna try to capture as much as I can um, to truly give kind of the inside experience of we're inside the ropes, truly, of that big of a spectator crowd. It's gonna be sick, but here are, some, here are the players warming up. On the scenes. Storm. All the people lining the fairway. And we are landing right in there. First, from Safety Harbor, Florida, Calvin Heimberg.
Schmidt. From Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, Simon Lazak. some commentary here but honestly we'll just let the highlight speak for itself enjoy We are final card or final day chase card just picked up discs slowly last play i've um, been throwing about four to five big forehands just getting everything loose dialed in uh so that we're ready to go uh yesterday was an experience of a lifetime uh one of the craziest cards that i think i will ever get to experience at that close of a level 
and followed up by another banger card today. What up, y'all? Hey, game on. Game on. Yeah, I mean, y'all, from the crowds, the crowds were insane. Um, just the energy that comes to the card with the crowd being there, it's an experience unlike any other. Um, I, I really hope that it translated for those of you that watch coverage, just how delighted Sully was to be there, soaking in that experience. It was so sick, such a cool experience. Um, and dude handled it like a rock star. Started off, had some slow moments right off the bat and getting out drove by everyone on the card is tough. The dude bounced back like a champ. Can't wait to do like a, a full recap of these two rounds because y'all, it's just so many cool moments. It's cool, so many cool stories to share, but excited to bring you guys in. And dive into the final four five today. Hanging above the path from two to three. These look up as you're coming off two's green. We don't want anybody getting hit. Same with the uh, tree about 20 feet behind the tee of seven. Leaning could come down. Please give it some space. On hole 11's tee, we got a report that there's a little divot in there. I'm not sure if they were able to repair it overnight. So please check the footing on 11's tee before you tee off. Extra careful. If there are carts in your way, you can ask them to move. You can have a marshal go move them for you. <laughs> So round five started a little rough, and I think it's important to note that Sully actually made lead card the last two days of USDGC last year and had a bad last round, which ended up pulling him out of a top 10 finish. So I know that was a big goal that we were pushing for. We wanted to grab that top 10. And the crowd was honestly, I feel like a little bigger on our card on round four than it was on round five. But the nerves were definitely there. And even as I was talking with the guy from Ledgestone, we just noticed that Sully was a little more nervous. His movements were a little tighter and you could just see it on all of the tee shots. And so I actually didn't get a ton of videos from the first half of the round because it was just full operation, get Sully comfortable, get him back to vibing. And you could tell he started three over on the front, I believe five holes, which was tough. Uh, and so then we went to hole five and he threw his tee shot, almost went OB again on hole five. And he was like, what am I doing? And literally just had the conversation with him of like, hey, as long as it lands in bounds, we weren't going for a birdie on this hole anyways. So we can just get back to the game plan, get back to executing. And once that happened, the dude rattled off birdie after birdie after birdie and shot an incredible final round. It was so sick, but we just kind of lived in the moment. I got, like I said, very few videos because it was just a lot of talks of, hey, let's see, like, let's just enjoy it, man. Uh, enjoy being here. Uh, and I'm just so proud of the performance that Sully put on Good there. Sir. So to wrap it up, incredible experience. It is one thing where we're making this content and we get to like talk to a camera the whole time. It's another thing entirely where you go to an event and you actually get to meet y'all. We get to meet the numbers that are the views that we see and the comments that we see. Um, and I think for Sully, it was just so cool seeing 
and having that feeling he knows he can throw with the big guys he knows that he is an incredible player and he's proven it before but just to be here on the world stage the biggest stage possible inside of our sport and to perform at the level that he did getting to see these crowds getting to feel those reactions I just think it's one of those where you watch his face and his smile on so many of the moments it was so cool uh, his shots on 17, his shots on 18, just getting to really soak in the noise and the size and the love of the crowd. But to me, what's one of the funniest parts of this is getting to uh, watch Solar's reaction where they have like an autograph booth after you finish the round for you to meet the players, get your disc signed. And Sully refused to go in the autograph booths pretty much any day. Uh, we convinced him on day four to get in there and he was signing signatures there. But even on day five, you had Ricky in the booth, you had Gannon in the booth, and y'all like, he wouldn't even stay in the booth because he literally was like, well, people don't want to be here for me. So he would walk down the line so that people would feel less embarrassed of like, oh, well, I don't want your signature. They could just kind of ignore him when he walked down the line. And y'all, he deserves all the love and the attention. Just such a stand-up guy on tour, one of the nicest people on tour. Uh, and so it was an honor to be able to be on the bag for him. It was an honor to be able to be alongside him for this journey. And I'm hoping we get the opportunity to, uh, to thrive later on in future events. Also, I just want to say thank you so much for those of you that said kind things while we were out there uh, on the course. So they even said on his post-tournament recap of like, also, it's cool when your caddy gets asked for more picks than you. Y'all, I was just trying to get off the green. I was filming the final shots of the round and we had this clip and y'all were too kind. Um, y'all were so nice all week and I was not there for me. It was there for uh, to meet y'all and there to support Sully and it was an honor. Behind the scenes was fun. I hope it showed you some different perspective and you got some different camera angles that maybe you didn't get to experience before. If you want to support Sully, he has discs, uh, he has quakes that are available through Ledgestone uh, if you want to do that. And so you can always obviously support me through foundationdisc.com. An amazing experience getting to be there, getting to be on the inside. I will remember rounds four and five for the rest of my life and I wasn't even playing. Still some of the coolest disc cross rounds that I've ever been a part of. That throw in by Sully on hole 14 was insane. Uh, that's why I included that clip and I'll show it again here. Uh, and then literally as we walked up the fairway, I was like, Sully, when you picked up disc golf a few years ago, did you ever think God was going to put you on a stage this big um, to have this opportunity? He was like, yeah, man, I don't know. Like, it's crazy. And then literally the next shot is where he threw it in. So it was just a crazy, surreal week. So thank you guys so much for being a part of the World Championships. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. So thank you so much. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Please make it fantastic for someone else too. What's up guys? It's Sullivan Tipton here. Top 10 at Worlds. All because of Robbie C. So subscribe. <laughs> and I'm going to leave you with the birdie. See you.